guys, Jared here, and today I want to talk a little bit about this bad boy right here, uh, Dragon Quest VIII on the 3DS. Uh, I have no means of showing you direct footage, and I didn't want to, you know, hold the camera and shaking and all this. That doesn't do the game justice. Uh, I have ordered a 3DS with a capture card, but the expected delivery time is uh, like January, late January. 2016 so unfortunately I cannot show you this anytime soon uh, at least not not to do it justice and I really want to do this justice but I can guarantee you I will show you direct feed footage of this before it's ever released in North America pretty much can guarantee that considering the odds of this ever making it out of Japan even though we've had the game on the PS2 is uh, virtually uh, non-existent but anyways I digress so, uh, I just very, very early impressions. I'm about eight and a half hours into the game now, and uh, number one, still an amazing game, guys. It really is a fantastic game. If you have never played the PlayStation 2 original, go out and buy it, because like I said, the, the chance of this actually getting released in North America is low, and I don't care what anyone says. If it happens, great, I'll buy another copy. But for right now, I just don't don't take that chance. This is one of the best games in the Dragon Quest series, and it deserves to be played. So go ahead and, and pick up the PlayStation 2 version. It's worth buying a PS2 just for that game. Get the nice little slim one. You can get them used on eBay for next to nothing, and they're quite reliable, the uh, thin remodel uh, PS2. So I would, I would recommend you go do that. But for right now, I want to talk about this game right here. So, first things first, I have not experienced the two new playable characters that are in your party. Um, I haven't met them yet, I, I haven't gone. They're Red and Mori, and I haven't, uh, I haven't, well, I just haven't had a chance. You'll see them on the, let's see, to you guys it'll be, what, the, the right-hand side, I think? You see them there? They are these characters, boop, boop, right there. Those two characters, right there. Um... I haven't, I haven't just met them in the story, and I haven't, uh, haven't had a chance to get them to join my party or whatever, but that's, that's okay. But what I have experienced, a hell of a lot of other things I want to tell you about. First off, the game seems to be based sort of like a mix between the Japanese original and the North American um, really revamped version. So first things first, you have full voice acting in every single event scene, so all the cinematics, all of them, every single one of them, now has voice acting, and it's superb, excellent voice acting. Obviously it's not in English, it's all in Japanese, but you can really tell, I mean, you get a sense, it's, it's really awesome voice work. Uh, all the music is orchestrated, just like the North American version, and it sounds breathtaking. I highly recommend you play on your 3DS with uh, headphones, because damn is it good. Uh, what else? Okay, so as I was going along, game was pretty much the exact same thing as the PlayStation 2 version. Big difference being that in this particular version, um, the graphics have been downgraded, naturally, right? The, the 3DS, as powerful as it is, is not a PlayStation 2. So what does that mean? Well, let's say um, you'll be running around the overworld and there'll be some texture pop-ins. So for example, it might look like a plain, uh, plain grass, and all of a sudden, you'll see like actually grass will appear. A lot of popping with trees and things of that nature. Um, as you as you like look off in the distance, you will see like mountain ranges and stuff. But there will be very 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 limited details. And then as you get closer, the details sort of pop in. That's the only negative thing I could sort of say about the game so far. Anyway, uh, it's been really really great. Now I want to go back. Um, I'm going to be jumping all over the place because that's just me as it pops in the head. Um, I said about the music, and I said about the voice acting, how that was based sort of on the North American version. Mentioned the downgraded graphics a little bit, um, but I should also mention that uh, it does share a lot in common with the Japanese version of the game, where like Battles, for example, there was, uh, and the overall interface. In the US version, or North American version, whatever, or actually even in the European version, it was very stylish, like the menus looked good. When you went into the main menu, it was like, well, bam! It was all like graphic and, and it looked it just looked nice. Whereas in the Japanese works sort of like Dragon Quest X. And if you don't know what that's like, go ahead and check out my Let's Play of Dragon Quest X. You'll see it's very, very basic. It's basically a white border with your individual commands in white text. That's it. 
So you would click on that and you'd you know, branch off into another window and branch off, excuse me, into another window and so on and so forth. And that's been like that since the Famicom days. Like, it, it's primitive. It's, it's done on purpose like that. So that, this version shares more in common with the Japanese version in that regard. Like that fancy, um, that fancy uh, user interface UI is gone. It, we're back to very basic menus. Like when you open it up, you have four commands on the left, four commands on the right, and then that'll open another window, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And battles play out pretty much exactly the same. The bottom screen is where your MP and HP are, and it lists sort of like the uh, the commands. So it'll say, like I name my character Anoa again, just just like that. And um, it'll say, like, Anoa attacks, uh, say, Slime B, something like that. And if you get, like, uh, paralyzed, if you get uh, put to sleep, it'll say your status command, uh, status, um, well, your status, <laughs> down below. And then up above is where you'll see all the, uh, all the action. The, an the um, enemies animate beautifully. Like, it's really nice. I mean, really. You'd be hard-pressed to sort of go back and be like, hmm. This, this is really a downgraded port from the PS2 version in terms of graphics, because really, it does look damn nice, uh, but it is. I mean, if you look at them side by side, the other weird thing is that they really boosted the contrast, so the colors are, are much more like, oh, in your face, bright, and greens are like green, whereas in the, um, the PlayStation 2 version, they were more subdued, the colors, and there was a lot more effects, like um, if you went through town, you might see some sparking from, um, say, like if there was a lantern or something like that, or you might see smoke off in the distance. That sort of stuff's all been removed, or it's been uh, really uh, minimized, kept, kept to a minimum. But again, this is a beautiful 3DS game. There's no question about it. I mean, it's damn gorgeous. Uh, now, the big surprise for me, and I was not expecting this, and I have been following the game somewhat, I don't want to say I was reading like blogs about it and stuff like that, but I was well aware of Red and Mori, um, I was well aware that there's a new dungeon, there's post-game content, a new ending, I was aware of all of that. Uh, what I was not aware of is, dun dun dun, no more random encounters whatsoever. Shock. I did not expect that. So, yeah, it plays identically to Dragon Quest X now. So, obviously, it's still Dragon Quest VIII, so you still have your party and all of that jazz. Except that now, no matter where you are, if you're on the overworld, if you're in the dungeon, if you're anywhere, you now see the enemies, you know, walking around. So, that's awesome. So, you, you can theoretically traverse the whole world without ever coming in contact with an enemy. That's bogus. Because the minute an enemy sees you, they, you know, run towards you and you get sucked into battle. Uh, the loading is a little bit more on the 3DS than it is on the PS2. With the PS2 you had the effect and then you were right in the battle. Uh, with here the screens go black, you go into battle, the screens go black, and then you're back into the overworld. It, it's minimal, don't worry. It's not like a five seconds of loading uh, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so no random encounters. Man, pfft, boom, mind blown. Did not expect that. Did not see that coming like at all. And, uh, awesome! I was so happy when I saw that, I was like, no way! Um, because it, I don't know, it's, it still feels, and it is Dragon Quest VIII, but by removing that, I don't know, I'm having more fun, like, and I loved Dragon Quest VIII, but I played it twice in two different languages, uh, but this is awesome, man, this is so awesome! Um, the next thing that I really, really have liked is just, going back to that world. It's an amazing world, an amazing game, and it's pretty cool. They, they added some other features that I really like. Like, for example, there's now a, um, uh, a store that you can go to. Like, so one of the options that you can select is, uh, it's, I don't know what it does. It, it, like, it connects to some server or whatever, and you can enter a 20-digit alphanumeric code in order to get prizes. So you can get, like, Roto's Sword, you can get, um, there was like a candy cane type thing, I don't even know what the hell that's for. Uh, but anyways, there's, there's a bunch of stuff that you can get like that through promotional items, promotional codes. Um, the other thing is, you can actually go per day and ask for a gift. And, and so far, every day I've gone on, I've got holy water as a gift. Now I don't know if during special times of the year we're going to get 
um, extra gifts. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work, but it's pretty cool. So you just connect to the server, and it goes da and you get a gift, and it tells you like what the gift is that you got. Very, very cool. Something else I really was surprised by. Do you remember the alchemy pot? Do you remember how that worked? I, I have not gone back to uh, the PlayStation 2 version as of yet because I'm not reviewing Dragon Quest VIII yet. I won't review Dragon Quest VIII until I get that capture card because I really, I, I, I want to do it justice and it deserves to, to be done properly. But anyway, um, from what I remember, and like Stephen would tell you, uh, my memories were destroyed. And for those of you who keep asking who the hell is this Stephen guy, He's the guy who helps out periodically uh, with videos and on the podcast. He's the other uh, nutcase that helps with the channel. Anyway, um, so I don't, I, I might be wrong with what I'm about to say, but I'm pretty sure that you could not access the alchemy pot all the time. I think you could only do that in the overworld, and when you put in your ingredients, it would cook, and you had to leave and do other things, and you'd hear like ding, and then you would go back and you could get whatever it was um, that was cooking. But now, what's so cool is like on the bottom screen, you can access it. Well, you know what? Let's see if I can actually show you guys uh, really quick. I know this is like super ghetto. It's not really going to show you anything. Um, but let's see. Let me boot into the game. Probably get, I'm going to put on mute because I don't want to get a copyright... Uh, you know, flag for this. That would be really annoying. All right. Sorry, I was not expecting this. I wouldn't have booted the game up. Well, I would have booted the game up earlier. But I just want to load into a game and uh, just show you guys the bottom screen interface because it's awesome. Uh, I've unlocked only a few things. All right. All right, so we're going to continue. And I'm going to have to come up to the camera. So this is going to be a little bit ghetto. So I, I apologize for that. So, oh, the other thing, the, um, the nub here, the, the, the nub, it works amazing. Look at the top screen there. See the way it's uh, like I'm going around and whatever? Far smoother than um, Monster Hunter 3. Like, really, really impressive. So I'm just going to go outside. I, I don't need to. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to. So let me just show you. So... You see up here, you've got this little, um, that little arrow, and it brings up this whole thing. The first one, it automatically is zoom, so it, it gives you a list up here of all the different locations that you visited, and you can just go ahead and select it, and boom, you're, you're back to wherever that was. Uh, this second to bottom one here, if I click that, you'll see that it's going to take me into the alchemy page and I can go ahead and mix uh, some items I'm just gonna um, actually you know what let's let me just show you okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do some herbs so I just put two herbs in there and uh, I'm gonna say go ahead and mix it it's gonna ask me are you sure I'm gonna say yes watch what happens here cooks Boom! Done. And you get it right away, you get the, uh, the more powerful herb, and that's it. Cool, no? So, I thought, that was, um, I thought that was actually pretty awesome. You don't have to wait, you can, you can try out a whole bunch of stuff right away. So all of a sudden, before alchemy was cool, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't very intuitive and it wasn't very user-friendly. Like, you always had to wait. And because of that, I didn't want to experiment with stuff. Like, I just didn't, I don't know, I wasn't there. But with this, this is awesome. Because now, it's instant, and I can just boom, cook something, cook something, cook something. So I've been messing around, I've got recipes up to yin-yang. I've discovered all kinds of cool stuff, made a whole bunch of gear, all because of that. So, um, that's awesome. The gift thing is awesome, really like that. And just overall, from where I am right now, this is just a, an amazing version of the game. And it's, it's probably the best version of the game. Yeah, the graphics have been downgraded just like ever so slightly, but everything else is just amazing, man. They have added tons of stuff in here. Oh, I didn't even mention the quest lines. That's something else that they brought over from Dragon Quest IX and X, and I have a feeling that's going to be what the series is going to do from here on out. They're going to have those quests. Now, what that is, uh, let's see if I can find one and I'll show you... Um, just quickly show you how that works. Well, not works, but 
I believe there are these. Uh, no, wrong ones. I'm looking at pictures now. That's the other thing. There's a camera. So you see? It saves your pictures to, um, to the SD card and automatically smacks on a Square Enix logo. So you can, um, you can actually export those off and use those for review purposes or share with friends, you know, what have you. Um, just trying to look, I believe, keeps telling me SD card, SD card. Okay, well this is the shop. Again, I don't know, I don't know how, see so you have two options there. One option is for your daily uh, check and the other option is if you want to enter in a code manually. Uh, where in the blue blazes is it? Oh, I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So, take a look at this. Let's come up and I'll show you here. Come on, zoom camera. No, I don't think you're going to see it, but this lists a whole bunch of quests. Like it says 001, 002, 003, and the number of stars, and all of this, whoops, these are all the different quests that you can do, and there's, there's tons, like uh, I've unlocked how many in total? Four pages worth, and the last one is 122. So that's a lot, man. That's a lot of quests. And most of the quests that I've seen right now involve pictures, like take a picture of this, uh, this situation, take a picture of that character and this, blah, 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 blah. But that's so cool because that extends the longevity of the game. So anyways, that's pretty much what I wanted to, uh, to talk about. Just very quickly, some of my initial impressions of Dragon Quest VIII on the 3DS. I'm so sorry, guys. I really, uh, I really should have listened to Steven last year and purchased a, uh, a capture card for, the, uh, for my Japanese 3DS. Because, you know, four months, that's... That's a long time to wait for, uh, for content. I would have loved to have shown you guys this and done a Let's Play, but c'est la vie. It'll have to wait till next year, unfortunately. But uh, that's it, guys. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this little, uh, my little impressions of Dragon Quest VIII. And uh, if you yourself are looking forward to this, by all means, leave a comment below. All right, guys, I'm out. I'll see you all in the next video.